what I said at that meeting, if you remember. Because <laughs> we are very lucky in San Antonio. Now I'm going to tell the truth. Is that we're very lucky in San Antonio. I think that what I learned from, and it was about 40, 50 from all over uh, the nation. I think I was the only one from Texas. Um, and what was very surprising and scary for me was that there was these you know, career-based and college-based nonprofit and providers that were going into schools and demanding things. And you all know from the history of this organization, we don't go in and do that. We work with you to get us to the next level. And so I was like, okay, how do you go in and demand? Well, we bring in resources. No, it, you know, it's got to be a joint partnership. And so they were complaining that they didn't get buy-in. Well, that's exactly why, because you go in and demand things. So that was one of the examples I used. And they asked, well, how do you do that? And I said, through our transition team and through all these kind of meetings and engagement and being of service to the school districts more than anything, uh, rather than going in there and demanding things. And I thought, that's just, it, I had a very bad vibe from that one conversation, I thought. Mm. So we came up with these, um, what does the relationship look like between counselors and other school administrators and service providers is what we came up with. And my understanding is that all that will roll out come January on what we, feedback we gave them. We used part of what Greg was alluding to and we gave you as a pre-read which was a counselor's and administrator's um, feedback on how they saw their role. And if you remember with the Southwest team, when I was with you yesterday, I encouraged you to define what the roles were of all the stakeholders in this process. Because that's one of the things we found when I was there in Washington, was that unless we fully define what everybody's role is, so everybody's accountable to each other, then it just comes up, whatever, whoever's there, whatever happens. And that's not what we want it to be happening. So that is, it was very intensive, two and a half days they put us through, and it was very, very beneficial. But I do want to tell you that we're very lucky in San Antonio to have the relationships that we have, um, because that's not what exists in other parts of, of the nation. And so I commend you for that. And, I, and we thank you on behalf of all the service providers that work with you. We thank you for being open to us and helping us as we help you achieve what you've got to do. So now, that perfect lead way into our next uh, activity. It's a gallery walk, and what you're going to see is we're gonna present some organizations, and not all, that do this work, but we were selective in just bringing in some. And we divided up the gallery walk by a couple of strands. College advising, which is what the Partnership and Advice Texas does, and then we divided it into financial aid, because you know in the city we're making great, great progress in financial aid. And what that, or, and it's being led by the chamber, but there's a lot of support organizations, but we decided to let the chamber take the lead on that. And then you'll see Cafe College as a resource center for all of you. And then the last strand is what are we doing in our classroom? So you'll get to learn a little bit more about what Jeff presented this morning, as well as the essay ready curriculum that many of you implement in your schools. So we're going to move over into another classroom. And so uh, you're going to go out these doors and you're going to move into phase two of Cafe College, and it's in that big classroom, and you'll see the setup. Oh, in your packet, yeah, I remember, in your packet, Jean and I were, you know, last minute planning, in your packet we put some information on the upcoming college week in San Antonio, um, so you have a, at the, it should be on the left hand side pocket at the very, very back, you'll have some basic information on the college week, and then we also have a form in there where we want to kind of start outlining your commitment um, to get behind this effort, remember it's a full week uh, that we do of activities. We have activities from elementary school students all the way up to our, our seniors that are graduating with college signing day and all that. So if you'll read through some of that, it gives you some of the details, but we do need to start making sure that our school districts put this on their radar and that uh, the buses are, 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 are appropriated and scheduled. Um, and we, uh, I know that Greg in the past has, has profiled our college week uh, as have other people uh, across the nation profile what we do for college week. So we do I encourage you, the school districts, to make sure it's on your radar. We are doing the same thing with all the college access providers through the college access, access network and so that we make sure we're all on the same page for college week. If you have any questions about college week, Jean or I or Maria Aguirre from Gentex, uh, Judy McCormick, we could give you some more information on that. Um, the other thing that I know came up um, in the conversations yesterday was a data portal um, the Education Partnership is one of the leads under the data portal. Some of you have seen it. Um, but the data portal is basically a dashboard where we will all be able to enter specific student-by-student -student information. 
So it will be already preset with all the data sets from the coordinating board, from Clearing House, from Department of Ed. Any sets, data sets that we have will be pre-populated. It's under actually the leadership and with the assistance of Educate Texas, who helped us get our data portal uh, situated and going here in San Antonio. And so, and actually we're further advanced than the other cities that are doing it, just saying. <laughs> But just saying, because um, uh, we're real competitive, you know that. Um, so part of what it does is it allows if uh, it's it's piloted by four school districts, which is which are you four, and then there's four college access providers, um, communities and schools, city year, the education partnership, and Advice Texas. And what we're going to be doing is if one of my advisors at Linear High School goes in and does the pin with the student for FAFSA, then we will annotate that so that when the Advice Texas advisor is there and working with that student, there's no going back to figure out what you did and what you didn't do. So it's very student-based um, accountability of what we're all doing with the students so we don't step on each other and we, du we don't duplicate services. So holistically, all of us combined can then do with the student what needs to be done to achieve what you've identified here. It will have AP scores, ACT scores, uh, SAT scores, they will have all that on the data portal for all of us to look at. Eventually, our phases as we go through this will be that we will be able to, parents will actually be able to get onto the data portal as well. And just like y'all did the dots, it's almost that kind of a system where we will identify things that will need to be done with each student. Um, and then we, will, we can get aggregate form of types of of, of uh, reports where we can say that many students were helped this month with FAFSA, that many students were helped with Applied Texas. It allows us to do all those kind of aggregate information. So uh, we had asked for some still shots to try and show you. We didn't get those. But those of you who've been, um, I know that Roxanne's been involved with it and Renee and Samantha and Brenda, um, Liz and Nancy and of course Debbie from Northside have been involved with it heavily. So if you have any other more information you'd like, so we've seen a live demonstration recently, what, about a week, two weeks ago? My, my weeks blend. Um, so we were able to see the latest, and it's looking really, really good. Some of the things that have come up have been, because, um, you know, this is a learning experience for all of us. It's been about when do the districts close off their files. I know that we decided that as a group we had to keep active our students on a little later into the summer to allow for the transition work, because we're going to document what organizations like the Education Partnership are doing that summer after they graduate with that transition work, uh, because it's very, very, very key. Um, those of you who received your FAFSA information from me, uh, when we ran the reports in May, we had a 34% completion rate of FAFSA in the city. When we ran it in this last report, which is at, in September, we had a 54. Wow. So a lot happens in that summer. And we can't forget that. And if we all close our data sets off as soon as graduation hits, we lose that richness of what is happening and how much our students are doing that summer. So I do want to point out that it's very, very critical, and we, we talked about it in that last meeting we had on the data portal, that, that those three months are make it and break it for our kids. It, it is. It's when they actually have to show up on the college campuses, and a lot of them, as you all know, are not. And so it's important that we have the support from the districts to be able to document for you what is happening and what we're doing in organizations like the partnership um, to get those students. Uh, and many times hand-holding and meeting them at the college campuses, that's our work in the summer. So um, it's very, very important that we still keep those live data sets going a little bit longer. I know we discussed uh, email. I think was one of the things that some of you have your email systems for the students, and they graduate and it gets cut off but they're not on the email systems at the colleges and universities. So the education partnership has nowhere to reach that student. And so we, that was one thing we talked about all together, that perhaps we can be leaving some of those windows of communication with the students open a little bit more. So the data portal is there. We will launch it very, very soon. Uh, we were hoping to have launched it by now, but I know there's, it's a system change, and we all have to be sure we're on the same page. So if you have any other questions, uh, there's leads within your own districts, um, or Jean, Russell, or myself um, can go ahead and, and, and help you with that. So we're going to move to the next room now, and then we'll continue over there.